So big data is something that you hear pretty commonly in tech, but what is it? And what's the difference between big data and data? Hi there, my name is Christopher Sandoval. I'm a product marketing and developer relations expert, and I'm here to make your product and your marketing just a little better. And today we're going to dig into big data. So first off, we should define what data actually is. Data or data is something that's generated from the ongoing activity of all of the sensors, all of the systems, all of the devices that you have around you. Just watching this video is generating some data. If you have a smart thermostat, it generates data by taking measurements of the surrounding air. If you have a modern car, it generates data going down the road. Even something like your smartwatch is generating a ton of data. So data by itself can give you information, and that information is often limited to what the data pertains to. For instance, you're not going to get information about your car from your watch. So if you want to get insights or trends that pertain to something specific, something that's not just limited to a single device, then you need to use something called big data. Now, big data is kind of what it sounds like on the tin. It's a lot of data all at once, and that data can generate a ton of insights. For instance, if I want to know the kind of videos that you watch on YouTube every week, that's just using data. But if I wanted to know what kind of videos everyone in the United States or Canada or the United Kingdom or India or Japan watch, well, each of those countries are going to have very different habits. And even when I get that data, I might want to know why certain times work in some countries and not in others. And that's going to require a lot of information about when people go to work or when people go to school, what the use of cell phones look like, whether people are consuming content on mobile devices or TVs or desktop computers. And I can't get that information from just one source. And that's big data. Big data is defined in a couple different ways, but the most common one is to give it three specific attributes. The first is volume, which is just the sheer amount of data. It's hundreds of thousands, sometimes even hundreds of millions of data points. Then there's velocity, and that's how much data is being generated every second. And finally, there's variety. It's not good enough to just have one kind of data. We need to have a bunch of different kinds of data from a bunch of different data sources. Now, big data systems are pretty complex, but today they often use something called distributed computing and storage. Now, distributed computing is just a bunch of computers that are working together to process data and get insights, whereas distributed storage is storing data in a lot of different places. And this is becoming even more important in the era of data sovereignty, where lots and lots of countries are expecting data generated within their country to stay in their country. So there's a lot of tools that are common within big data. A few of them, if you want to look into greater detail, are things like Hadoop, Spark, Kafka, and providers like Snowflake, Databricks, or BigQuery. But more importantly, you should understand that big data gives a lot of benefits, but also has some pretty big drawbacks. Big data gives us insights in ways that we can't get from individual data sources, but it does have implications for privacy, security, a whole host of things. And so it's not just good enough to understand big data or to deploy big data. You need to understand more complex systems like homomorphic encryption. Homomorphic encryption is a really complex topic, so I'm not gonna dive into it too deep here, but it's basically a way to encrypt a data set and then act upon that data set without actually getting access to the underlying data itself. And those sorts of solutions are making big data really, really powerful, but also more respectful of individual privacy and safety. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please like, comment, subscribe, and please tell me what tech topic you'd love me to cover on one of these videos. This has been Christopher Sandoval, and I'll see you in the next one.